Good afternoon. Uh, my name is James Byrne. I'm coming from the University of Toronto in Canada. I'd like to thank the Scientific Committee for giving us the opportunity to present our research here today. Um, the title of our presentation was uh, Laparoscopic versus Open uh, Surgical Management of Adhesive Small Bowel Obstruction. Uh, I have no uh, disclosures to make today. Um, as many of the members of the audience are aware, uh, small bowel obstruction is a very common surgical problem, accounting for upward of 16% of surgical admissions, uh, most of these due to uh, adhesions. Sorry, I'll continue. Um, in 2005, there were over 350,000 uh, hospitalizations secondary to adhesiolysis, uh, costing over $2 billion. Uh, for patients who undergo open surgery uh, for small bowel obstruction, uh, morbidity is significant, approaching approximately 40%. Uh, in recent years, the benefits of laparoscopic management of small bowel obstruction have been uh, demonstrated as the uh, role of acute care laparoscopy um, uh, as wi is more widely accepted. Uh, nonetheless, controversy still exists regarding the safety of this approach. Therefore, uh, the purpose of the study was to compare objectives or outcomes in patients who underwent emergency surgery for adhesive small bowel obstruction by laparoscopic versus open surgical approach. Our primary endpoint was overall complications and our secondary endpoint variables related to postoperative uh, outcomes for our patients. This paper used a retrospective study design. Uh, we reviewed all patients who underwent emergency surgery for adhesive small bowel obstruction between April of 2005 and October of 2013. Uh, data abstracted from the electronic patient record included uh, baseline patient characteristics, preoperative, intraoperative variables, as well as postoperative outcome variables. All patients who underwent laparoscopic converted to open surgery were included within the laparoscopic group with view to intention to treat analysis, uh, and univariate, multivariate, and multivariable logistic regressions were used to uh, examine the relationship between outcomes and surgical approach. We found uh, during the study period that there were 303 patients who underwent uh, surgery for adhesive small bowel obstruction at our institution during the study period. 72% uh, of these underwent open surgery, while 28% underwent laparoscopic surgery. Uh, the conversion rate within the laparoscopic surgery cohort was 37.6%. Comparing patient characteristics between the groups, these were largely similar with a few key exceptions. Patients in the laparoscopic group had a slight, though significant, uh, slightly higher mean BMI than the open surgery group. And there was a tendency for patients with prior abdominal surgery to under, undergo open surgery. Patients with higher ASA classification and SIRS at time of presentation were significantly more likely to have an open operation. When we looked at results uh, following surgery in our patients, we found that patients who underwent laparoscopic surgery were significantly less likely to undergo, uh, to, have, to receive blood transfusion as well as, uh, signific as, well as uh, had significantly lower rates of post-operative pneumonia, septic shock, and need for reintubation. There was also a significantly lower uh, rate of death in the laparoscopic surgery group, uh, 1.2 versus 7.3%. These uh, differences in morbidity were the primary driving uh, factors uh, in the significant difference between in the overall complications uh, which favored the laparoscopic surgery group of 28.2% as compared to 46.3% in the open surgery group. Indeed, laparoscopic surgery was associated with a significant 60% reduction in the likelihood of adverse event with an odds ratio of 0.4 uh, by multivariable logistic regression analysis. When we reviewed our secondary outcomes, we found that there was no significant difference in mean operative time between the open and laparoscopic surgery groups. While there was a significantly uh, uh, lower uh, volume of surgical blood loss in the laparoscopic surgery group. In terms of time to recovery of gastrointestinal function, uh, as indicated by time to tolerance of NG removal and uh, time to passage of flatus, uh, this was significantly shorter in the laparoscopic surgery group. And patients who underwent laparoscopic surgery had a significantly shorter postoperative length of stay with a mean of five days as opposed to, as opposed to seven days. There are some important study limitations to consider here as well. Uh, like all retrospective uh, study designs, uh, we were unable to account for uh, all confounding variables within our analysis. As a single institution study, our uh, patient follow-up was limited to healthcare encounters at our own institution. And there would be an important selection bias, uh, namely uh, with preference to perform uh, open surgical approach in sicker patients. Nonetheless, uh, where feasible, treatment of adhesive small bowel obstruction by initial laparoscopic approach is not only safe, but associated with a quicker recovery, shorter length of stay, and reduction in adverse outcomes as compared to open surgery. 
uh, further investigation is needed to understand the predictors of conversion as well as predictors for laparoscopic completion. Thank you very much for your time. Open for discussion now. Uh, Barry Salky, New York. I enjoy that very much. I agree 100% with you. I think it's terrific to, to show it. My question is, when we do this, we usually, and we've clearly seen the transition zone, divided the adhesions, there's no question that it's resolved. We usually get our NG tubes out by the next morning. So why the three days and uh, on the laparoscopic group? What was your criteria for that? Uh, I think that's a, that's a very good question. Um, and I think that uh, that answer to that comes from delving into the actual sort of patient records, which we did. Um, looking at the patients who did have those simple uh, lysis of adhesions, um, often did have their NG tube removed at the time of surgery. Um, and so um, essentially their time to NG tube removal was zero. Thank you, Dr. Byrne.